Question? Yeah, yeah, please, y'all, y'all, I'm sorry, yeah. Get to where you can see this overhead. Um, taking over the computer screens tends to be a little bit more complicated than um, doing the overhead up there. Can you say okay, Haley? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm recording, I should start talking. We're in Photoshop. <laughs> Go to File, Create a New One. The size of it needs to be 8 by 10. It can be either portrait or landscape. We're going to keep the color mode RGB. Remember, if you're ever doing a digital illustration or any kind of digital imagery work, RGB color mode tends to give you the best results for using your blending modes and picking colors. Although when you send it to a printer, you're going to have to change it over to CMYK once you're finished. Uh, we won't worry about the background color. We'll keep it white, though you can change it up as well. Let me show you kind of the basics of what we're trying to do. I'm going to pull away from the exercise really quick. Let's say I had two images that I wanted to combine in a unique way. I just found this image of some paint spatters and we'll use one of the portraits that we're working from. My idea is I want to put my image inside of this paint spatter. I want to be able to, to have it masked out around the edges of this. So what I need to think through is how do I select just this area, just my, my paint spatter area, and use that kind of as a frame or use that as the mask itself. So let's pull this one into Photoshop. Remember when you do this, it will create a smart object layer. That's okay for what we're doing. And I know from experience, I'm gonna turn this portrait so I can get a little bit more use out of it. For my background, just to make it clear, the, oh, excuse me, the difference between the, the white background and this, I'm gonna turn on my, well, let's tell you what, let's even make our background a different color. Let's make it black. So my background is black, so you can see the white behind the paper. And we'll put her portrait on top of here. Oops. Make sure she's on top of that layer. And I want her to be inside of that. Let's take it one thing at a time. The first thing I need to do is I want to keep my paint spatters, so I need to get rid of what? The white. I need to get rid of the white area. If I was to grab my eraser tool, try to erase all of this, I would be here forever and it would never look exactly right. So what I want to do is I want to be able to select just everything that's not the background layer. In Photoshop, there are several ways of quickly selecting something. The easiest way to do this, since it's all the same color or within the same range of colors of white, one of the selection options is called a color range. Y'all remember back in the intro, the color range? <clears throat> I'll turn off invert. What this allows you to do is wherever I click on here, you can see it will start to pick up those colors. So if I want to select just yellows, if I click on yellow, you can see it kind of masking out over here. Same way for reds all the way down to blues. I'm just clicking and dragging. And I can adjust the amount of that color by adjusting the fuzziness. The more I do, you can see it's picking up more colors or less colors. So if I was to select out the white, you can see I can pick up some wider areas of, my, of this, which is what I don't want to do. Or I can bring it back down and actually start blowing out and picking up a lot of the, the pixelated imagery of it. So it's kind of finding the sweet spot of what's a good selection. I'm going to say right about there is pretty good. <clears throat> now, what do I have selected? Just the background. I have the white selected. I know that I want to select just this area. So really what I want is the inverse of it. Does that make sense? I don't want the white. I'm, I'm wanting to select this. Photoshop makes it easy to reverse or inverse your selection by clicking here. Notice it does the opposite of it. So now what do I have selected? I got the painting and I don't have selected the white. When I say OK, you can see my marching ants has all of this. It actually has the outer area, but that's OK for what we're doing. <clears throat> all right. Now that I've got the selection, hey, what's a quick way of masking something off? Ma layer mask. Yeah. <clears throat> Y'all have done this before. I've got it selected, got here. When I add a layer mask, it's now masked off and I've got just that selected. Pretty cool. So the first problem is solved. I've got the, the uh, image that I want isolated to work from. If I want to part, no, no, excuse me, put her inside of it, what's the other kind of mask that we've worked with? Clipping, Clipping mask. 
Remember, you can hold down Option, click between the two layers, and that'll instantly mask it. Now I've got her inside of that area. Pretty cool. Knowing what layer she's on, what layer my paint it is on, and what layer the, the clipping mask are on are all very important to doing a successful collage because eventually you're going to start having to merge things and take away one layer and add to another layer. Since they're on different layers, here's the fun part. I can start playing around with blending modes as well. I can pick up some of the colors and not just have her image on there. I can change her blending mode to multiply and I can pick up those colors as well. And so this gives me a much, much better uh, looking kind of, uh, what am I trying to say, blend between the two. Tell you what, let's even change up the background. If I added, uh, it's maybe a dark blue, I added kind of this bluish border behind it. I can even change up the blending mode of this layer to blend with the other ones I was playing, and it gives me different results as well. A lot of this is simply playing around to see what it does. That, that's the easiest way I can, I can tell you how to learn this. But once you know the basics of what you're trying to do, and, and you, you, kind of, you can even say it out loud, I want to get rid of this, I only want to select this, then you start thinking, how do you do that? You can see how quickly I was able to do that. So let's jump into the exercise for what we're doing. For this exercise, like I said, 8 by 10 I'm going to keep my portrait since my image is portrait. And I'm going to choose just a tree composition. Ah, there was that really good one that I worked with. <clears throat> All of these do work really well, and you can move them and change around. This was the one that I did earlier, so I'll do this one. We'll drag it onto my Photoshop palette. And zoom in. Okay, I want to keep my tree. So what do I need to get rid of? I need to get rid of the sky. I need to select the sky. Please don't get your eraser out and try to erase this away. It's going to go very bad for you. Use this method I just showed you. We're going to select the color range. In this, ca in this case, we're going to do the color range of the sky itself. I'm going to turn off invert for now. When I click on the sky, you can see instantly it picks it up. I'm getting a little bit lost where the edge or the clouds are, so I may need to adjust my fuzziness. Then I'm going to choose Invert, so I don't select the sky, I'm actually selecting my tree, whatever is white is selected. When I say OK, I now have my tree selected. Make sense? I can now mask it off, and now I've got just my tree isolated. You can still see some areas where you can, you've got the sky. How do you clean up a layer mask? Paint. Paint it. Paint it either black or white, and I can go through with uh, my black brush and clean up those small, small areas. <clears throat> I could do a better job a little bit later. Okay, so I've got my tree that I want my image to be inside of. Let's place my image onto here. And I'm going to scale it down with this. From here, if I was to turn on a clipping mask, if I was to clip myself into the tree, and again, the other way of doing this is going to layer, create clip and mask. This is what I get. Now I can move myself around. And I can see myself in part of it or not in others. <clears throat> Let's unmask it. Edit, excuse me, layer, unmask, or release the clip and mask. What I want to do is I want to be able to cut out the background of my image. This is a new kind of thing to Photoshop as well. I'm going to use just my quick selection tool. Remember, quick select. Works like a brush. You can click and drag over an area. And it quickly selects the outline. Make sure I get my glasses. And we'll go ahead and do my body as well. Hold down Option. If you select too much, it'll erase away that selection. If I turn on, notice what didn't get selected. Got a little fuzz up here that didn't get selected. It's got a hard edge around my hair. If I turn on my clipping mask, I'll turn off here. This is the selection that I get. Looks like, like I'm wearing Dapper Dan. It's just got a very hard <laughs> edge up here. Photoshop has a new way of refining your clipping mask. In the book, it's going to say one way. Uh, the, the newest edition has another way, uh, a, a little bit better way, a little more confusing though, way of refining this edge. I want to be able to get the featheriness of my hair up at the top. If you hold down Control and click on your mask, 
One of the options is Select and Mask. When you do this, it'll go into a particular editing mode. In this case, I've got green as my background, and there's some different view modes that you can work with. I like to work in overlay so I can see it. You can do black on white, uh, but this at least shows me what I'm working with. There are some tools. These are the new tools. <clears throat> One will allow you to select. The main tool I'm gonna work with is just my feathering. This is, uh, allows me to choose the edge of it. What do they call it? The Refine Edge tool. With Refine Edge, I can click over the edge of my hair and it will start to look at the differences, the contrast between my hair, in this case the darker pixels and the lighter pixels that are along that edge. And you can see how very, very quickly, very easily I can pick up a feathery edge. If you have hair that's very frizzy and you take a picture of yourself behind uh, preferably a solid background, this will very, very easily select a, uh, the frizzy edge of this. In this case, let's see if I can get that little, that little bit of hair I've got left right there. See how it's picking up just the few wisps of hair. Very, very difficult to do. It'll even pick up, ooh, you can see how the, the background of my glasses, it'll even pick up that and kind of get rid of that and keep my glasses as a selection as well. If you go too far, for instance, this will give me some problems on my edge. You can see it'll start to cut into my outline, so maybe I don't need to do that right there. But once you get your edge refined, you've got your selection, you've got it refined, when you say okay, I can jump back in and this gives me a much, much better looking edge. That's a mask, that's masked out. Photoshop did all the work to be able to do something like that. All right, now let's uh, clip myself back into here. Got my clipping mask. I can move myself around. Oop. I don't want group, I want my layer, there we go. And I can move myself around so I can see my composition. Now, why can't I see myself up here? What's... Exactly. Remember, with a clipping mask, you can only see pixels as long as there's pixels in the layer that's below. And since we took out the background, it's only going to show my image. Oh, got too many only going to show my image if I can see it. So let's start moving this around. I'm going to select, say, my trees, rotate them this way. So I'm moving my tree layer to give myself a good composition. I like the way that it kind of comes off of my head, and so I like that kind of outline, but I'm losing the front of my face, right? If I wanted to bring back my face, there's two things that I can do. First off, if I wanted to keep my clipping mask, what do I do down here? How can I add face to here? Yeah, get my paintbrush. I could paint in pixels and put things on me here. The difficulty with that is I also have to work with my layer mask, and so there's a lot of things going on. Instead, I'm going to make a copy of this layer. If you want to quickly make a copy, you can just drag it down to new layer. And there it is, copied there. I'm going to ungroup it from my layer mask. So check out what I have. <clears throat> I've got one image, got another image below it, same thing, that's grouped with this one. Now guess what I'm gonna do? I've got the edge that I want right here. All I have to do is to mask out this back part of my edge. I wanna see the back part that's uh, blending with my trees. So I'm gonna choose my layer mask, got my little head right here. Grab my brush tool, and wherever I paint black, we'll mask off that area. Pretty cool. Pretty snazzy. <laughs> and I could play around with this, like I, you know, see areas that I want to keep or don't want to keep. If I go too far, remember you just swap back over to white, and you can paint yourself back in. Just be aware that you got background that you're working with. Now the reason why I'm getting you guys to do it this way is because this is a little more complex. I've got to think about a lot of different layers and what I want to do. I've got one layer that's devoted solely to the front part of my image, and there it is right there. I can even rename my layer front of head. I can rename this one back of head, or blended part of the head, and this is of course my trees. And so. <coughs> 
If I need to make an adjustment, if I need to move something around, I need to know what layer I'm working on and what I need to do to it. As you do your own compositions, be aware of what layer you're on and what you want to do with it. I kept it relatively simple. Other things I can do is I can go in, I can change my blending modes. For instance, if I wanted the back of my head to blend in a little bit better with the background, I'm going to double click. Do y'all remember what the blend if allows you to do? Looks for lights and darks, and if you hold down the option key, watch this blend a little bit better as I pull that in. And so that kind of fades in a little bit better or worse. Let's try this layer. There we go. So now I can pull more of one image over the other and have it transition a little bit better. I can change the blending mode usually. Let's see what screen will do. Yeah, that'll get a little bit lighter, and so it fades in a little bit more to this one. It's a lot of playing around. You're changing your blending modes, you're changing your opacity, and, uh, and how your, your layer mask mask in with each other. Once you've got a composition that you like, <coughs> I need to get rid of my bottom. bottom my, whoop. Once you've got a composition that you like, that's pretty good. That's weird enough. Weird enough for Facebook. The last thing I want you to do is to kind of tie all the colors together. We're going to get rid of the colors. I'm going to uh, turn it into black and white. You can do this in full color, but for me, I'm going to make it a little more artistic. The quickest way to turn something into black and white is to use one of your layer adjustments. One of the layer adjustments right here is black and white. And if you see on your layers, it'll add it to the top of all your layers. Gets rid of all your saturated color. You can even start playing around with if you want your reds or your skin tones to be a little bit lighter or if you wanted the trees to be slightly darker. I will leave that up to you. All cool? Once you got a composition that you like, you're going to save it as a JPEG. You can also save the Photoshop uh, file so you get all your layers. Upload that JPEG to, to Photoshop once you're done. If you wanted to try looking online for other kinds of things, like if you want to use buildings or if you wanted to use um, other trees or those kinds of things, you're certainly welcome to use it. Or you can look on Moodle and work with the, the resources that I gave you. For the rest of the time, once you finish this up, start working on your own compositions. Um, by the end of class today, try to pull something together that shows me for both of your illustrations.